exactly what had gone on. But Achan said, well, I went into Jer Jericho. And he said, as I was doing the Lord's work and going out here and killing and slaying, he said, I saw a wedge of gold caught my eye. He said, I saw some Babylonian garments that were real nice to look at. They caught my eye. And he said, I saw some talents of silver, and they caught my eye. His eye being the flesh. He looked upon the gold, and his flesh said, Boy, that would be nice to have that wedge of gold. You'd be a wealthy man. He looked upon the silver, and his flesh Said, you know, I can use that. I know God, God told me to take it to his house. But I can use that. Boy, these garments look good on my bride. I can use that. I think I'll take that. And he said, Joshua, it looks so good and enticing that I slipped it out of Jericho. And I brought it into my tent and buried it in the ground. It's down in my tent. He confessed that he had done wrong. And in doing wrong, he caused all of Israel to suffer. Now, church, I'm going to take this down a little bit further. I'm going to bring it a little bit closer to your house. I'm going to bring it just a little bit closer to home. Because God is saying there's some Achans in the camp. There's some Achans Aiken, in the camp. Now, the thing about it is, in your household, if you have someone in your household that is going against God's commandment, if you have someone in your household that's not being obedient to God's Word, and you're tolerating that sin, you're tolerating that disobedience, you're bringing a curse upon your household. We're not talking about just money. We're talking about obedience. We're not talking about your tithes. I know some of you think, well, he's going to hit me up for my tithes. Now, that's between you and God. That has nothing to do with me. I mean, if you pay it, fine. If you don't pay it, fine. It doesn't make any difference. This church was founded without anybody but God Jehovah. And I'm telling you, it's going to be here without anybody but God Jehovah. Crossroads Community Church is not built by man. It's not organized by man. It's not run by man. God has been in charge ever since the foundation was dug. And He's going to be in charge long after I'm gone. He's going to be in charge long after you're gone. He's going to, get, he's going to make a way with or without us. So I'm not talking about your money. I'm talking about being obedient or disobedient. You see, Achan was told, don't you take one thing out of that city for yourself. That's a command. That's instructions. That's directions. Don't take anything out of that city. Except you be cursed. You're going to be accursed if you do. Well, you see, there's a thousand commands. And I keep bringing it. I'm going to do a teaching on it. But there's over a thousand commands in the New Testament alone. A thousand commandments. Everybody thinks there's only nine commandments been brought over from the new, from the old covenant. There are nine, but there's a thousand more. And God don't tell you to do something. He doesn't tell you to go do it if He doesn't want you to do it. He doesn't tell you not to do it unless He doesn't want you to do it. So when He gives a command, there's a reason behind it. When He tells us to do something, there's a reason behind it. And when we are disobedient, we are accursed. You don't have to believe it and you don't have to accept it. I'm just delivering what I hear. Because praise God, that's all I'm say saying is I hear to tell my people those that are obedient are going to be blessed. Those that are disobedient are going to be cursed. You're going to suffer loss. And if someone in your house is an Achan, if somebody in your house is disobeying God, they're bringing a curse upon the family. It's not just the person. Let's go on. Anyway, he sent his 3,000 men out to fight Ai. And Ai smote them in chapter 7, verse 5. And the men of Ai smote them, about 30 and 6 men. 36 men died. For they chased them. 
And in verse 10, it says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou upon thy face? Because Joshua had fallen on his face and started praying to God, God, what in the world is going on? Why are we being defeated? Why could we not whip that small army? Why couldn't I stand up and cast out that little devil? Why couldn't I speak healing into that vessel? Why couldn't we do the things that you've told us we could do? Verse 11, Israel hath sinned. Do you notice what he said? Israel hath sinned. Israel hath sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen and dissembled also, and have put it even among their own stuff. Well, God, are you telling me that every... Israeli has sinned? Are you telling me that everyone has sinned? Because he said Israel has sinned. And church, God looks upon sin as sin. When he tells you not to do it, we're not to do it. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies. Now, Brother David, you're in the Old Covenant, and I just don't believe that that stands true today. Well, that's fine. Don't, you don't have to believe it. But you believe that Noah built the ark, don't you? You believe that Abraham offered up Isaac or was getting ready to. You believe that, don't you? You believe that God parted the Red Sea, don't you? Don't you believe that he drowned uh, Herod and all of his army in the Red Sea? You believe all of that? Why, why can't you believe the rest of the Word? You see, people don't like it when it goes to rubbing against their beliefs or their, their personal flesh. But we have to believe it, even though we're not living under the Old Covenant, we're not bound by the Old Covenant as the Old Testament days were for the church of that day or for the righteous. We have, we're living under grace and mercy, but the Old Covenant is our schoolmaster. The Old Covenant is where we learn. And we need to learn from the Old Covenant. We need to learn from this Word of God. Therefore, the children of Israel, verse 12, could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you any more, except ye destroy the accursed from among you. God's telling Joshua, Joshua, you're on your own. Joshua said, but Lord, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. But no, but one of your people have. And, and, and so Joshua had to find the root of the, the trouble. And of course, in chapter 7, we go on, and I, I told you about it a few minutes ago. And in verse 19, And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And, of course, this is where he said, I, I found the gold and the silver and the garments, and I hid it in my tent. And they went to the tent, and they found it. They found it, and, and, and God told Israel, told jo uh, Joshua, he said, take that one that's brought this curse upon you and get it separated, separate it from the congregation. So they took Achan and his family. They took his wife and his children. And they took everything in his tent, all of his substance, everything, all of his animals, his sheep, his asses, everything that he had. They took them out into the field and they stoned them to death. Then they burned them. They stoned them and they burned them to separate them from themselves. You see, sometimes God, we don't understand or we don't want to understand how God is. But again, I remind you that the God Jehovah that we serve, he's not changed. 
It's the same God that commanded Achan to be killed is the same God that I serve today. He is the same God forever. He's not going to change. He said, listen, heaven may pass and earth may pass, but my word's not going to pass away. And Jesus Christ is our advocate. He's seated on the right hand of God there making intercessory prayer for us. And I thank God for that grace and mercy. But we're not to abuse that grace and mercy. We're to fear God. And praise God, we're to know that God is in control. And if he says, listen, you don't do it and you go and do it, you have sinned. To know good and not to do it is sin to you. To know to do right and not to do it becomes sin in our lives. And when God gives us a commandment and tells us to obey his word and we don't obey it. A church, this is why we're bringing guilt into our household. We're bringing curses upon our families because we're not living for God. And we're not doing what God has called us to do. And it's time for the church of God to get back on on the road. I'm talking about climbing back up on the rock of Jesus Christ. None of us are perfect, but praise God, we can strive to be obedient. And when God says you can do it, you better well know that you can do it. But when God says not to do it, you better stay as far away from it as you can because you're bringing curses upon your children, bringing curses upon your family. You may say, well, everything is going right and everything is going well. It might be for right now, but what about tomorrow?